right, it's me again, boys and girls. So we wrapped up chapter 12. Now we're going to move on to lesson 13, and I'm sorry, lesson 12, chapter 1. Now we're going to move on to lesson 13, chapter 2. But first, let's review a little bit. So in our previous lesson and chapter, we learned about the story's main characters who were Jimmy and Prince Brad through their actions, words, and the author's description. We also learned that we can use contest clues to help us determine the meaning of unknown words. All right, without further ado, we're going to pick back up with our reading. We are going to listen and follow along as chapter two is read to us. The title of chapter two is, We're in the Prince cannot write his name. Chapter two, remember once again, we want to visualize, we want to paint a picture in our head and imagine this text as we're reading it. In your minds, I want this to play out as if it were a movie, as if you guys were writing a movie. So I want you to visualize what Prince Brad may look like. I want you to visualize his actions, what he does in the story, what he says, how he says it. And I also want you guys to do the same for Jimmy. So let's get started. Jimmy could not count on, I'm sorry, Jimmy could count on a thrashing first thing in the morning. Sure and certain, he thought, as he pulled on his fine velvet breeches and silk stockings, the prince wouldn't know his lesson. The royal tutor was quick as a fly swatter with his willow switch, and Jimmy would be back in rags. Take a last look at me, Pa. Rest your bones, he muttered to himself. Did you ever think I'd be holed up in the king's own castle and all rigged up in duds that would shame a peacock? I'll fetch a pair of sharp-toothed ferrets and go back to rat catching. Same as you. Same as you, Pa. The tutor... The tutor, Master Pegwit, was a round-faced man with fat cheeks. He pointed his switch at the prince. You fiddle-faddle scholar, he bellowed. One day you'll be king, and you still don't know the alphabet from pig tracks. The prince snapped his fingers. I can always get someone to read for me. You can't so much as write your name, fish posh. I can always get someone to write my name for me. The tutor's cheeks swelled with anger, almost unhorsed the small spectacle saddled on his nose. It would be easier to educate a boiled cabbage. Prepare to be punished, your lordship. Now, of course, we know by punished, Prince Brad doesn't actually receive these punishments. So who do you guys think is going to be called in to receive these punishments? Did you guess, Jimmy? You're right. The prince says, Ten wax at least, and good and hard if you please. Jimmy, who was obliged, that means he was eager to, he was okay with being very close at hand for the daily lesson. He reckoned that freedom was close at hand. The prince threw him a smirking glance as Master Peckwith raised the switch and beat the whipping boy like a carpet. Jimmy didn't bawl. He didn't yelp. He didn't bellow. Tin wax and not a sound escaped his lips. You contrary rascal, the prince exploded. I'm on to you, Jimmy from the streets. It's pure spite that you won't have. Think you can cross me and get away with it? Ha, never and no how. Gah, thought Jimmy. He's going back on his word. And don't try to run away. I'll have you tracked down till your tongue hangs out like a red flag. And so it went on for more than a year. The prince learned nothing, and the whipping boy learned how to read, write, and do sums. All right, you guys, so now we're going to pick up with working with words. Now we learned that this is a very, very important thing to understand while reading the text because we don't want to only read a text, we want to be able to understand the text to comprehend it, remember? So there are a few words in that chapter that we definitely need to dissect and understand a little better. So our first excerpt from this chapter says, you contrary 
rascal. The prince exploded, which means he got extremely upset. I'm on to you, Jimmy, from the streets. Then he said, it is pure spite that you want how. Think you can cross me and get away with it? Ha, never and no how. All right, so first we're going to figure out what is the meaning of the word contrary as it is used in the text. Remember, we always want to use background knowledge. We want to use what information we already are familiar with to figure out this word. So you guys think back and see if you've ever heard the word contrary, whether it's been in a movie, on a play, you know, at home listening to your parents. After we use that background knowledge, then we are going to look at those breadcrumbs, those contest clues that are in the text to help us figure out what the word means. So let's look closer at the word contrary. Now in this, we know from you know what we just read in the text that Prince Brad is upset with Jimmy for not crying. At this point, he said to Jimmy, I'm on to you, which means I know exactly what you're doing. He goes on to say that it is pure spite that you want howl, which means you won't cry, you won't let out any bellow or show me any sadness at the fact that you are being whipped. And he's, he's pretty upset about this. So him calling Jimmy contrary, what do you think that means? Based on the information that was provided to us in this paragraph. All right, if you guys said that contrary means to be to do the opposite of what someone else is telling you to do all the time, then you guess correctly. If you are contrary, that means that when you are told to do something, you willingly, knowingly disobey it. You choose not to do it under any circumstance. And so at this point, we know that Jimmy had gotten to that point. Do we think Jimmy was wrong for being contrary towards a prince who was purposely getting him punished every day? who took delight, who was happy at the fact that he was getting whippings? I don't know. That's your opinion. All right, now we're going to look at the word spite. So based on what we've learned so far in chapters one and two, what does the prince mean by it is pure spite that you won't howl? And we talked a second ago about the word howl means to cry. What information from the story helped you figure this out? So we know that in our previous chapter, Prince Brad had threatened to send Jimmy back on the street. Prince Brad assumed that Jimmy would be upset by this because this would mean that he had to let go of all of his fancy clothing. He had to let go of all of the royal food he was being given. And instead of Jimmy being upset by this, he was exceedingly happy about it. He was excited. It even said that he couldn't wait for the next day because he knew that the prince would not get his lessons and that the tutor would have to spank him or whoop him. And by him, I'm referring to Jimmy, of course. So even though Prince Brad thinks that he's getting at Jimmy by getting him these whoopings or by um, allowing him to take another whooping in his place, we know that Jimmy is excited about it. And so up until this point, Prince Brad had thought that he was hurting Jimmy by him getting these whoopings or by him telling him that he was going to get another whooping. But to see Jimmy not bawl or let out a bellow at all with this last whooping, Prince Brett realized, oh, you're doing this for your satisfaction. You don't care about the royal clothes. You don't care about the royal food. You want to go back on the streets. You want to do this in spite of me. So based on all of that information, when he says that it is pure spite, he's saying you're purposely doing this. You're doing this to be defiant. You want to go against me. You want to be um, disobedient. You don't want to do what I'm asking you to do or what I want to see you do. All right, so I hope you guys figured that out using these context clues. All right, now we're going to discuss what we read in that chapter. And of course, with these discussions, we're going to need to make inferences. We're going to draw conclusions and things of that sort. So the first thing that I want us to look at says, how does the prince view education and what evidence from the text supports your answer? Now, especially for my fourth grade students, you should be aware of the fact that when we text, 
test. Not only are we looking for a correct answer, but we also have to have evidence to support that answer. It's very important. They want to know that not only do you know the answer, but you can support that answer with evidence from the text. So, we know, well, we're going to talk about why the prince viewed education or how he viewed education. And then I want us to pull evidence from the text to support our answer. So how do you think the prince viewed education? Do you think he was excited about it? Was he happy? Was he joyful to wake up and go to see his tutor and learn all that he could learn? Or do you think he really didn't care about his education and he could care less about being there with a the tutor? What do you think? If you guys guess that he hates getting his education, then you are correct. Now, what evidence did we read about in chapter 2 that gives us the evidence we need to support that answer? Maybe the fact that he can't even spell his own name, nor does he want to learn how to spell his own name. The tutor even said that he didn't know his alphabet from pig tracks. Now, this boy has to be sort of of an age, right? We could guess at least 10 to 11. He knows how to tie people's patterned wigs to their chairs so that when they stand up, their wigs fall off of their head. He's aware of the fact that he can do bad things and someone else will be punished. So he's not a small kid. So the fact that he cannot write his name, that he doesn't know his alphabet at the age of we can guess or infer 10 to 11 years old means that an education is the least of his worries. He's not concerned about it. And even more evidence that we can pull from the text is the fact that he says, I can get someone to do it for me. Said at the snap of a finger, he can have someone write his name for him. So clearly he doesn't care about his education. It's not important to him. Now I know that I don't have any boys or girls who thinks like that. Let's move on to our second discussion question. Why is the prince angry after Jimmy is whipped? So let's think about what the prince has wanted. Why was he upset with Jimmy in chapter one? Well, we know in chapter one that Jimmy receives 20 wags for the little prank that he pulled on the lords and ladies. And we know that at the end of that chapter, Prince Brad asks him, why don't you howl? Why don't you bellow? Why don't you cry? He even went as far as to tell Jimmy, it's no fun seeing you get a whooping if you don't cry. He takes delight in it. He's happy to see him cry, bellow, and get upset. So at the end of this chapter, the prince was angry with him because once again, Jimmy did not cry. This angered him. And not only did Jimmy cry, but in this instance, at that moment, it's when the prince realized you are purposely not crying. It's not because this doesn't hurt you. Yeah, it hurts you. I know it hurts you. I know that it upsets you. I know that it makes you angry. I know that it doesn't feel good. But you are choosing not to cry because you don't want to give me that satisfaction. That made the prince very angry. Very angry. All right, let's look at our last discussion question. This one says, do you think Jimmy views education the same way Prince Brad does? Let's think about what evidence was given to us in the text because we know that it's very easy for us to simply say, yeah, he views it the same way as Prince Brad or no, he doesn't view it the same way as Prince Brad. But as you guys recall, we have to have evidence to support our answer. So do you think he views it the same way as Prince Brad? If you said no, you were absolutely right. He does not view it the same. Now let's think back on our text and see what evidence we have to support the fact that he doesn't view education the same way as Prince Brad. All right, so let's think about that last paragraph in our chapter. In the last paragraph, it said that the whippings went on for a year, even though Jimmy was clearly ready to go back on the streets. Afterwards, it says that Prince Brad still after an entire year and after his entire lifespan, did not learn anything. He has a tutor. He has a personal tutor, a personal teacher at his castle, in his castle. They can teach him whatever he wants to know. And after an additional year, he still doesn't learn anything. But you know who does learn something? Jimmy. Jimmy learns how to write. He learns how to read. And he even learns how to do sums. That says a lot. That is our evidence that supports the fact that Jimmy did not view education the same as Prince Brad. All right, you guys. So we're going to pause right here. That concludes lesson 13, chapter 2. 
And we're going to pick back up in a moment with Lesson 15, Chapter 3.